After 50 years of searching, a mother finally found her son's body at her feet. In 1952, Ireland was still conservative, and unmarried pregnant girls, like Philomena, were sent to working convents as penance by their families. After giving birth to a boy, who was taken away without consent or explanation by the nuns. Philomena had to pay. It was impossible for her to repay such an amount, despite working hard every day since the convent did not provide free room and board. When Anthony turned three years old, he was sent to a foster home in the United States without his mother's knowledge or permission. Upon returning to the convent, the two men inquire about Anthony, but are informed by the nuns that all information was lost in a fire years ago. Martin becomes suspicious and begins investigating the history of the convent. Through his inquiries, they uncover that the fire was not accidental, but rather intentionally set by the nuns themselves. It is revealed that many young girls were sent to the convent and became pregnant. Subsequently, their babies were sold to American families for 1,000 pounds each. The fire was started as an attempt to destroy evidence of these transactions. Martin took Minna to the United States to provide information about Anthony at a records office. They compared birth records and immigration dates, finally finding Minna's son, who grew up to be a brilliant man and served as legal counsel to a former U.S. president. However, they discovered that Anthony had died in 1995 from the last column in his file. This news devastated Minna causing her to lock herself in her room for days trying to process everything she had learned. Although Martin wants her to come home, Mena isn't ready yet. She still needs closure on what kind of man Anthony was and whether he ever thought about his mother. Martin meets Anthony's ex-girlfriend, a sophisticated and stunning woman. Upon discovering that Mena is actually Anthony's biological mother, the ex-girlfriend generously hands over all of her old photos of him. In these pictures, Anthony appears confident and intelligent as he stands alongside the president. When Minna inquires about whether or not he ever mentioned Ireland to his ex-girlfriend, she responds negatively. However, it becomes clear that their relationship was merely a facade because Anthony is gay but cannot openly express his sexuality due to societal expectations associated with his status. Anthony's boyfriend, Kate, probably knows him better than anyone else. Another person close to him is a girl who was also adopted by the convent where he grew up. Martin and Minna visited Anthony's foster mother's house where they saw his childhood photos and videos. Later, in their hotel room, Minna decided not to search for Pete anymore because she felt it was a sin to see her son again, according to God's commandments. Additionally, she did not want Martin to write about Anthony because he never acknowledged her as his mother while he was alive, and she did not want to disturb his reputation after her death. However, Martin felt that Minna was not wrong to want to know what had happened to Anthony so many years ago when he had disappeared from their lives with no explanation and no mention of his birth mother, especially after noting that he often wore a harp badge in his photographs. Despite his claimed lack of interest in Irish culture or heritage, Martin encourages Minna not to give up hope. Perhaps by getting closer to Pete, they can learn what really happened inside Anthony's mind as time went on. They watch some of the footage Pete shot that shows another side of Anthony, sensitive and gentle, while maintaining a humble demeanor throughout. The final scene of the video was shot in a convent, which turned out to be the same place where Minna had stayed years before. Anthony seems to have been searching for her, but the nuns there are lying and even accusing Minna of abandoning him. Despite this, Anthony still hopes to find his way home, and his final resting place is behind the convent making everything come full circle. Martin asks the sorry nuns of Minna to apologize, but she instead chooses to forgive them and asks only that they show her Anthony's grave. After 50 long years of searching, Minna finally knew where her son was buried and found closure. 